Okay, so your video is done, but then you head up to export and what is all of this? Don't worry, because today we're gonna go through all the best ways to export your video for social media, for theatrical release, and even broadcast TV. Let's jump on in. Back here at the export page, a great place to start is by checking out the presets. You can scroll down and click on more presets and this will give us another window where we can search through all the available presets. For example, you can search YouTube or Facebook, although I don't really use Facebook that often, but it's there. And we'll get multiple presets for different resolutions. Or if you're rendering out a film, you can search for cinema. Using these presets are great if you know what you're doing, but if not, it might be a little confusing. Like if our timeline is not the same resolution as the preset that we picked, we'll get these black bars. Or maybe I picked one of the cinema presets and then you ended up with this huge 100 gigabyte video file. That's why it's good to know how to manually export for every type of project. Let's say I wanna export this video for YouTube or for Facebook. Under format, I should pick H.264 or H.265. These two formats are great for social media because they give you good quality and they keep the file size small, which is perfect for social media where your video is going to get compressed anyway. H.265 is good for rendering videos with a resolution of 4K and higher because it's good at keeping the file size small while retaining higher quality. For anything lower than 4K, H.264 is fine. But I wanna note, if you are exporting 4K and higher, you can still use H.264. I just recommend using the preset match source adaptive high bitrate so it matches the sequence settings and it still gives you a good quality export. But let's show you some more manual methods. So if you didn't choose a preset and you just selected the format, let's say H.264, under basic video settings, let's just press match source to make sure the resolution and frames per second matches our timeline settings. If you use multiple different types of resolution video clips in your timeline that are different from your export resolution, let's say you have 8K or 4K clips or even 720 clips and you're exporting in 1080p, then you'll wanna tick render at maximum depth to get the max color info when rendering. This will help fix these ugly gradient lines. And you'll also want to tick use maximum render quality. This will make the render take a bit longer in exchange for the highest quality possible. We can keep the rest untouched here until we get to bitrate settings. Here, make sure to pick VBR one pass. VBR stands for variable bitrate. So when it's encoding, it will change the bitrate to increase the quality over different sections. Now you wanna use the one pass because if you use the two pass, it's gonna take a lot longer and there's not really any noticeable difference for social media. And CBR here stands for constant bitrate, which means that it will use the same bitrate throughout and it just doesn't produce as good of a result, so we're just going to skip that. In terms of target bitrate here, just remember that the higher means better quality and a bigger file size. For 1080p videos, I'd set it to about 20, but it can also be less than that if you need to decrease the file size. I wouldn't go beneath 10 though. And then for 4K, make it 30 to 50 or more. Down in the audio tab here, just make sure you have these same settings I have here on screen. And after that, you're ready to hit export. Or we could also just send to Media Encoder, which is great if you need to render out multiple sequences at the same time, so you can keep using Premiere Pro while you're exporting with Media Encoder. But if you're rendering a short film, for example, and you want the render to be as high quality as possible, instead of bumping up the bitrate to the max, we can actually scroll back up and change the format to QuickTime and I recommend choosing the ProRes 422 video codec. Using this format is also a great way to help counter the compression that happens on social media. Let's take render at maximum depth again and make sure depth is set to 16. For audio, I could leave the settings as is, but if I was using mostly high quality audio files in my timeline, like these WAV files instead of MP3s, I should change the audio's sample size to 24. 
So that way the higher audio quality actually comes through. Now we're ready to export. And here's a bonus tip. If you didn't know, there's an effect tab right here with a bunch of options, like adding your logo or text on top of the whole video. So if you need to protect it before the actual release, you can add a watermark or you can even time code overlay, which can be useful for giving precise feedback. Before we talk about exporting for broadcast TV or for the cinemas, let's talk about exporting the same video into multiple aspect ratios. So normally what you would have to do if you had a 16 by nine landscape video is you'd have to then duplicate that sequence and then change the sequence settings, let's say to a vertical aspect ratio, and then manually reposition all the clips so all the important information is in the frame, which can take a lot of time to do. And sometimes we still have to do that depending on how complicated the timelines are. But there is an effect called auto reframe, which can get you most of the way there and sometimes all the way there. Let's show you how it works. To reframe a whole sequence, right click on our sequence in the project panel and pick auto reframe sequence. Then we'll get a pop-up window here, and this is where we can choose the new aspect ratio. For motion tracking, I'll leave it as default, but if your footage has a lot of fast movement or slow movements, you can pick these options here. Lastly, we can choose if we want Premiere to nest all the clips before applying auto reframe or not. This is important because auto reframe will disable any keyframes added to the motion tab. So if you want your animation to stay intact, be sure to pick the nest option and then we can hit create. So now we have this new vertical sequence here. And as you can see, all the footage is nested and it has the auto reframe effect applied to it. And this is basically like a transform effect that will try to make sure our subject is in frame. But if you don't like how it's framed, you can still go in and manually adjust the position and even add your own keyframes. And yes, you can also apply this effect manually to any clip. There's no need to auto reframe the whole sequence. Another important thing to remember is that when you're exporting for, let's say Instagram or TikTok is the social media safe zone areas. So feel free to grab this free social media overlay that will make sure that you have all the important information in the safe zone and nothing will get cut off. Once all of that is done, you can go ahead and export. But if you need help creating more variations of short form content, look no further than today's sponsor, Opus Clip. Now Opus Clip is most known for their short form clipping. So you drop in a long form video here, you hit a few buttons and boom, Opus will then spit out a bunch of short clips from your long form video. But I'm here to report that they've grown beyond just clipping. Now they have an upgraded editor with a better UI, a smoother text-based editing experience, and a bunch of new caption styles and tools such as the AI reframe, which will auto detect the subject and track them to always be in frame, along with letting you manually adjust the position. It's kind of like a juiced up auto reframe in Premiere. And also there's an AI audio enhancer and voiceover tools along with many other useful tools. And if we connect our social media accounts to Opus Clip, it will automatically take our newest up upload and generate a bunch of edited clips from it. And because this is connected to our social media analytics data, it will give us ratings for each clip to help us decide which one has the most potential. And then we can use their auto scheduler here to schedule multiple clips to release in advance across all your socials, making the whole process so much faster. If any of this sounds good to you, you can use my link below to sign up for Opus Clip. If you're watching during Black Friday, Cyber Monday season, you can get 50% off a monthly plan or 65% off an annual pro plan. Now, if you're watching this after that sale has passed, you can always use my code Premier Gal to get one week free or 50% off three months. Thanks to Opus Clip for sponsoring. And now let's get back into the export settings. If you're editing a short film or a feature length film to be shown at film festivals or in the cinema, or if you call it theaters, you want to pick the QuickTime format with ProRes 422 Video Codec. This format is pretty close to the lossless quality, which is great for the big screen. So as for resolution, this depends on where the film will be shown because most theaters will probably require you to film in a flat 
or a scope aspect ratio. You can see the resolution on the screen now. Also, many theaters will only accept 24 frames per second. So keep that in mind. But if your edit is in the usual 16 by nine ratio, you can create a new sequence with the required aspect ratio and FPS. Then drag in your edited sequence and scale it up a bit until you don't see the black bars on the side. Obviously anything on the bottom or the top will get cut off. So make sure all the important stuff is in the frame. But if you don't want to deal with any of this cropping and rescaling, just be sure to edit your video in that required aspect ratio. Then you can go ahead and export the sequence. Pick match source to make sure the resolution is correct. In down in audio, make sure the sample size is 24. And if you have a subtitles track in your edit, here's where you can choose to burn the subtitles into the video file or export it separately, which is probably a better option for film so you can turn it on or off later. Now we're ready to export. Now this should be fine in some cases, but many theaters require you to deliver the film as a DCP file. And this actually isn't just one file. It's a folder of files used to store and deliver films for projection in cinemas. In Premiere, we can actually pick the free DCP render included in Premiere. With this format, we won't have many options. Like for resolution, we only have three options, which are the standard film aspect ratios. And as you can see with this free DCP render, we won't have options for any higher resolution. So if you need to export a 4K film, you'll need to buy or rent a DCP render that can do it. But if you don't need 4K, then you can just pick the resolution that matches your timeline and hit export. It's important to note that the DCP files can actually take up a ton of space. Now on to broadcast TV. For this, we can use the same QuickTime ProRes format again. This is the go-to option anytime there's no specific requirements given. Although in the TV world, they might ask you for an MX F file. In Premiere, we can choose the MXF OP1A format for that. Down in the video codec, don't worry about all these options. Just find the XD Cam HD 50 options and pick either NTSC or PAL. NTSC is the norm in North America and Japan, while PAL, PAL, is the norm in Europe and some parts of Asia. The standard for PAL is 25 frames per second, and that's why we don't have any other options here. And NTSC has both 23.97 and 29.97 as standards. Just pick the one that you know the broadcast team asks for. If your edited sequence has a different frame rate here, what you can do is the same trick as earlier, where we make a new sequence with the right settings and drop in our edited sequence. Then we can finally export. But note that when you're exporting MXF, there's no need to tick the render at maximum depth option because the render is just gonna take longer with no noticeable difference. Now let's talk about making sure the audio in your project is not too loud or quiet for broadcast standard. Sometimes theaters or TV broadcasts will ask you to make sure the integrated loudness of the audio is at minus 20 loofs or maybe lower. Loofs is just the standard way to measure how loud your whole project is. Even on YouTube, they will have a limit of minus 14 loofs. So if you upload anything louder, YouTube will try to compress your audio to stay at their standard. But for TV and film, they're more strict about this. So what you can do in Premiere is open up the audio track mixer. And on the final mix on the far right, add the loudness meter. Double click to open it and start playing your edit. As it's playing, you can see the integrated loudness is being calculated. Just play the whole project or maybe just the louder parts for like a minute and you should get a pretty good estimate of how loud your project is and if you need to make any adjustments before exporting. Another way to do this is when you're editing the video itself and you're doing the sound mixing yourself is you can select each audio type at a time and make sure to auto match the loudness inside of the essential sound panel. 
So if you have some dialogue selected in your timeline and you go up to essential sound, you can go to the loudness tab and select auto match. And this will auto match it to the target loudness of broadcast standard of minus 23 loops. So now for sure you are more confident with how to export your project for different delivery formats. And if you have any questions at all, just be sure to drop a comment down below and me and my team will do our best to answer it for you. If you wanna learn more sound tips inside Premiere Pro, just click right over here. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. Bye.